In this tutorial, I would like to show you how to use one of the FET interactive simulations to complete your homework that is, uh, that is due this week. I posted a link on Moodle uh, to, this, uh, to this site, but it is the FET.colorado.edu, and the uh, simulation that we're going to be using is the Circuit Construction Kit, which is abbreviated CCK. <clears throat> We will be using the uh, the DC only version. We don't. Uh, um, we probably won't work with uh, AC circuits in this uh, uh, in this class. So navigate your browser over to this uh, this website, and you'll click on Run Now to download the uh, the the simulation. Don't click on this uh, a whole bunch of times, or else you'll download multiple instances and. Uh, the first one takes maybe about five minutes to uh, to load, so give it a uh, a few minutes, and then it will uh, it will pop up with Java questions. Do you really want to run this? Yes, you do. Um, so on and so forth. Eventually, you get to the circuit construction kit with the one instruction: grab a wire. I don't want to grab a wire yet. I'm going to ignore that. I'm going to grab a battery. This is just left click and drag. If you're completely unfamiliar with uh, uh, with these FETs, but uh, I know physics and other uh, chemistry faculty use these, so they should be pretty straightforward. I'm going to pull out a battery. Um, when we take a look at this battery, notice how the uh, the dimple is on the left hand side. That's the positive side, and on the right hand side is the uh, is the negative. We can right click on any one of these and show their values. That shows that it is nine volts and it has zero, uh, zero internal resistance. We can change the voltage by right clicking and choosing whatever number here. I want to keep it at nine volts right now. Uh, this is true for all of these circuit elements. We can right click on them to get more information and to change some of their parameters. We can also visualize as lifelike or as a schematic. Uh, I'm going to keep things on lifelike just for uh, 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 tutorial purposes, but the schematic shows you the, uh, the actual um, circuit elements. The resistor is the swivelly line, the battery is, uh, is a single large line followed by a small line. Notice that the large line indicates the positive side of the, uh, uh, of the battery. We also have a couple tools here. I'm going to select the uh, voltmeter. Ta -da! Get it out of the way. You click and drag the, uh, uh, the leads. Typically, as with a real voltmeter, we connect the negative leads to the, or the ground lead to the negative side of our, uh, of our circuit, or in this case our battery, and the positive to the positive side, and wow, it reads nine volts. Seems to be working. Um, and if we don't have a connection like this, we get question marks. And if we have, if we touch these, short these two together, we do get zero volts. So it seems to be working okay. What happens if I take another battery, left click and drag, and drag it over and connect those two? In fact, I'm going to take another one too. So I've got this stack of batteries. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with this uh, configuration. If you've ever added batteries into, say, a flashlight, you add them um, head to tail. And let's see, that first battery, what's the voltage of that first battery? Nine volts, big surprise there. How about if we have the two batteries, the first two batteries together? They're both 9 volt batteries. Do we expect them to be 9 volts altogether or do they add together? Looks like they add together 18 volts. Not rocking science here, just to show you how we, uh, we use this, uh, this simulation. And one can expect that if we look one more to, uh, to look at all three, we're getting 27 volts. It is interesting to note that we could uh, take one of these batteries and reverse them, right click and reverse, and notice what happens. We're now back to 9 volts. 
Now what's happening here? If we take a look at the first battery, we've got 9 volts. And if we take a look at the second battery, we get 0. Now the first two gives us a total of 0. And if we just look at that second battery, notice how it says negative 9 volts. And that makes sense because we've got our leads reversed for, the, for this battery relative to, uh, uh, relative to this one. So uh, that may explain why uh, uh, if you don't put all your batteries into the flashlight in the right direction, you're not going to get a functioning, uh, functioning flashlight. Um, okay, let's uh, right click and remove a couple of these and make a very simple circuit and then I'll leave you guys to do your own stuff. Wires can be added, click and drag. Again, we're just adding components. You can stretch out your, your wires uh, however you want. I'm going to add a couple wires here just because I know where I'm going with this, uh, uh, with this tutorial, and it makes it a little bit easier. I want to add a light bulb. Click and drag. And base of the light bulb, and then the other connection point is to the right. And once we connect them, oh, the light comes on, the uh, electrons start flowing, and we've made a uh, we've made a circuit. We can see that the electrons are flowing through the battery out of the negative side through the uh, the light bulb, making it light up and then back into the positive side. Um, this is important conceptually to notice that the, uh, the, the, elect the electrons are moving in, uh, uh, from the negative side of the battery to the positive side of the, uh, uh, of, of the battery. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in, in class. Again, if we take a look at the, uh, the voltage of our battery here, that is 9 volts. Now let's see what happens if we take a look at the, uh, the voltage drop across our, our light bulb. We see that the voltage drop across our light bulb is also, uh, also 9 volts. We may have expected that. Uh, if we are applying 9 volts with our battery, then there should be 9 volts going across our, uh, our, our light bulb. One other thing that we can do is look at the uh, current that is currently flowing. To measure current, we need to put our ammeter within the circuit. So we're going to have to break our circuit. I'm just right click split the junction right here, for example. And I'm going to take our ammeter and connect it like so. And once it's connected again, and our, um, our circuit, um, in our circuit, is flowing 0 0.9 amps. Um, we'll talk about where that, uh, where that number is actually coming from when, after you've completed your homework. I'm going to remove this, and I'm going to add one more element. I'm going to add another battery, like so, and put the, uh, the light bulbs in and notice how our light bulbs are not as bright as they used to be. Um, let's take a look. Again, our battery is still working. It's still 9 volts. But what do we have going across this light bulb here? Notice now we only have 4.5 volts going across this light bulb. And you can imagine we must be having yet another four and a half volts. We add those two together, we get our nine volts. And this is an important concept that uh, we're going to explore further after you've completed the, uh, the homework. But I think I've shown you some of the basics of using the FET simulation. You should at least have enough information to complete the uh, homework activity that I put up on Moodle. And we will uh, do more of these activities on Friday. Part of your quiz on Friday will be based on information that you've learned in this worksheet.